Well, great. Welcome to another Bay Trail Confidential. And we've got a great show for you tonight. I'm really excited about both. Actually, we have three great topics. We'll be discussing that in a second. We're going to be talking about the Carquina Strait. You saw lots of pictures of that in the slideshow. We're going to be talking about the Water Trail, which is an amazing network of places where you can get into the bay. And we're going to be talking about the trail family sibling rivalry. So lots of good stuff. And again, this is Bay Trail Confidential number five. So this is the fifth one we've done. We started in October and we've got some special guests here. I do wanna mention that we're being hosted by San Francisco City Guides. This is a nonprofit that does walking tours of San Francisco when there aren't pandemics going on. But during these times, we've been doing a lot of virtual programs. And anything you guys do to support us, we really appreciate. I know many of you paid for um, donation tickets and I think we've raised almost $500 from that. So thanks to all of you who did that. Just wanna mention a few Zoom pointers. We're gonna keep everybody muted except for my guests. Uh, but at the end of the program, we are gonna let you guys unmute and um, say, th you know, ask us questions, make statements, whatever you want. Um, but we're gonna to wanna to ask you to raise your hand and we encourage you to use chat during the program. We love chat. Ethel, my co-host, is going to be monitoring chat, and she will uh, be reading questions and uh, letting us know like if um, there's statements that we should hear about during the program. But at the end of the program, we would love to hear from you in your own voice. And when you do that, we'll ask you to raise your hand and we'll, we'll call on you. Um, just want to mention the Zoom controls. If you're on like an iPad or an iPhone, they may be a little different. Um, but this won't, you won't really need to do anything until the end of the program anyway with that. Also want to mention, I do have show notes. So I will be putting up maps of some of the places we talk about, some of our um, information, links to the water trail, the ridge trail, um, some other associated trails. It's all going to be in the show notes on our webpage. And I'll be emailing you tomorrow the survey for the program and a link to that show page. So my special guests today are Ben Botkin of the Water Trail. Welcome, Ben. I have Penny Wells, who is a founder of the Water Trail. We're going to be learning all about the Water Trail. She's also a past president, I should probably show you the guys, this, founding president of Bay Area Sea Kayakers. Ben is a, a trail planner for the Water Trail. And then Simone Nagion de la Tong, hopefully I said that right, who is a trail planner for the Bay Area Ridge Trail. And you know, some people have been saying we should be like thinking about starting Ridge Trail Confidential. And I just have to say, I've had a really great time exploring the Ridge Trail, getting ready for this program. And I'm gonna be wanting to do lots of things on both and the water trail too. <clears throat> so our program, um, you know, we're gonna do a few introductory things. We're gonna show you the Bay Trail cred for our guests. And then we're gonna, our topic, first topic is gonna be the Carquina Strait. And we just got so much to talk about there. Uh, if those of you who are tuning in, oh, I didn't even launch the poll. Hold on, let me, let me get this poll going here for you guys. So fill that out while we go through the Bay Trail cred, because we do wanna know where people are tuning in from. Um, and then, so we're gonna talk about the Carquina Strait. Then we're gonna talk about the water trail, which if you're not a boater, if you're not a kayaker or a canoeer or paddler. You might not know a lot about it, but you will by the end of this program. And then we're going to talk about a sibling rivalry that everyone should know about. Uh, and then we're going to do the, the uh, photography contest. We've got wonderful pictures of bridges that people have sent in, and we're going to vote on the winner for that. So go keep filling out that poll, and we are going to go through our Bay Trail cred. Those of you who are new to the program, this is where we kind of show where people have been on the Bay Trail just so you get a sense of where we're coming from. And like, this is, um, this is Ethel's cred and we love Ethel. She's, um, she loves the Bay Trail, but her cred is not the most substantial because you've been on the um, disabled list <laughs> for a little bit, but you're, you're getting better, right, Ethel? I'm getting better, but still on injured reserve. And we've given you a lot of ideas of places to visit once you're back on your, your feet and 100% again. Yeah. So this is Lee. Lee is a, a trail planner for the Bay Trail Project, and he's been almost everywhere on the Bay Trail. 
But Lee, I see a little missing area down here. So do you have plans to maybe fill that in soon? Yeah, I definitely have some plans to fill that in soon. Uh, one of our next shows is going to be on El Viso. I'm going to use that as a real excuse to go down there and check it out. In fact, Lee, you and I actually might meet each other in person. I've been working with Lee since, I don't know, about June, and he and I have only met on Zoom. So we will hopefully, like, we'll be careful, we'll wear masks and all that, but we'll be maybe in person down there in El Viso. This is my, I'm a bit of a show off, but um, I did fill in more of my Bay Trail cred on the Carquina Strait. Got to go to some really great places, but we're, we're not going to bore you with that. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Penny, so this is, Penny has special Bay Trail cred because she's a, a kayaker. Is that true, Penny? Are you more than a kayaker? Or is that really what you do to get around the bay? Well, I started out canoeing, but wound up sea kayaking. So I haven't been on too many places uh, along the Bay Trail, but I'll tell you, the, the Bay Area Sea Kayakers Trip Planner has about 130 sites around the Bay, of which 90 are on the Bay Trail. And I'm sure I've been to all 90 of them. Wow, it's, it's very impressive. And, and so that's why we filled it all in because I know you've been to, you've been all over the place. Yeah. As has Ben Botkin, who is a trail planner for the water trail. But Ben actually has pretty good Bay Trail cred too. So how do you explain that, Ben? Jack of all trades. Um, <laughs> No, I, I just do, uh, just love spending time by the shore. So try and get out there any way I can. And fortunately through the water trail, I've been able to get out in a variety of crafts from sea kayaks to stand up paddle boards, to dragon boats, to whale boats. Um, I've even tried kiteboarding. So uh, try and, trying to do them all, but uh, none of them particularly well. And, and you live in Richmond. So you know about all the great Bay Trail. That's what we talked about on our last program, but Richmond is... So it's got the most miles of Bay Trail of any city on the Bay. So very impressive. And then Simone, we haven't really done you justice because Simone, you, you work for the, the Ridge Trail. You're, you're putting, um, you're scaling that out. So we, this is where you've been on the Bay Trail. But you know, I, I've tried. <laughs> I've tried, Rodney. You've but done well. Me, it, when you go to the next slide, which I think you're about to, I have... I'm now almost complete, completed the entire Eastern Ridge of the Ridge Trail. So one of the partner trails we're gonna be arguing about later on. <laughs> There's the gonna be some arguing later on. There's gonna be yeah. voting too. We're gonna all get to vote on things between the Ridge Trail, the Water Trail and the Bay Trail, the trail family. <laughs> and it's interesting for me because I've been doing a lot with my family lately and thinking about, I've got two brothers. So we kind of have the same thing. It's like. We work well together, but yeah, sometimes it gets a little, little, you know, there's some sharp elbows. <laughs> so we'll get to that. But now we really want to jump into our first topic, the Carquina Strait. And I just want to say I've had a great time exploring this area. And you're going to see this name Lewis Stewart a lot. He was a photographer. He lived in Port Costa, took a lot of great photographs of the Carquina Strait and other subjects. And um, we're going we're gonna to be um, actually doing a slideshow at the very end of the program during Q&A. We're going to see even more of his photographs. But he loved to go up in helicopters. And I talked to his wife. I said, well, he must not have been afraid of heights. She said, well, he kind of learned to get over that. He, he was a photographer for PG&E, would go up on power lines. So you know, here we're looking at the, uh, the Zampa Bridge up by Vallejo. And uh, it's been pointed out to me that this, like we've got bike trail on both bridges, both the uh, Carquinas Bridge down by Martinez and Benicia and this bridge. And that's kind of unique that you can go between two interstate highways and, and ride your bike on both. Here are my big takeaways from the Carquinas Strait. Um, it's got an amazing amount of public open space. Uh, those of you who are tuning in, I, was, I did say, I, I, let me end this poll and actually say how many of you are tuning in from the Carquinas Strait. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results with you guys. And it, we see we have about um, only 10% only of our people live on the Kirkina Strait. Maybe, maybe they're taking that a little literally. Because if we look at the um, areas, we, we do have a lot of people in Contra Costa or Solano counties, which encompass the 
so the Carquina Strait. So maybe, maybe many of you live near the Carquina Strait, but those of you who live in proximity to this, you people are very lucky. It is, it is just amazing how much there is out there to enjoy. And it's a place I'm definitely gonna be coming back to a lot. It's a great place for those of you who live in other parts of the Bay Area to visit. We did wanna point out that some of the biking is better suited for more advanced riders. And I'll be talking about the bridge to bridge ride. And there's just a few places that are a little more hazardous and challenging, but there's also some really great, um, very safe places on, on these sections of the trail also. Incredible views from uh, both sides of the Carquina Strait and too many great places to talk about. Um, although I'm gonna list a bunch at the end that we're not even gonna go into depth on um, because we just had to leave some pretty good stuff on the cutting room floor. So yeah, we do, we see we have a lot of people, the majority coming in from Alameda and Contra Costa County. Um, many of you have been to these places. It looks like the most popular is the um, is Benicia, downtown Benicia, really great place to visit and some nice places, some good, Trail is, is, is it, uh, I know it's the Bay Trail through Benicia. Is it also the Bay and the Ridge Trail there? Yes, it's both. It's okay. one of the spots where we coincide. Yeah. So, and we're going to be talking about like the convergence of them on, on the Solano side. Um, although I guess it's also on the Contra Costa side too, right? That's right. Uh, it does cross over in a couple of spots near the bridges on the Contra Costa County side and in Martinez. And we, and this is great for a ridge trail. We got a lot of hikers. Um, although I, I did mountain biking on the ridge trail to, to prepare for this. And um, yeah, so, so let's start talking about these places that um, these, this is a, this is by the way, a Bay Trail map card number 16. These by the way, are available on the Bay Trail website. So if you, if you own a set of the cards, they're really great. Here's Here's mine, I just love them. Um, and you, if you win our photography contest, you get a free set, so think about that. But these are the five places we're gonna, we're gonna kind of do a, a, a dive on. Um, we're gonna talk about Port Costa, the George Miller Trail. This is Mount Wanda, the Mount Wanda hike on the Ridge Trail, um, downtown Benicia. We're also gonna talk about the Benicia State Recreation Area and then Glen Cove. And this is this just not to show off, but this is all the exploration that I did to get ready for the show. I went to a lot of places, had a really good time. So Port Costa, Penny, you wanted to tell us about Port Costa. You said it's one of your favorite places. Um, why, why do you like it so much? Well, one of the best things about Port Costa is the fact that it's small, it's out of the way, it's very historic. And of course, there's the warehouse. So the warehouse is a restaurant and a saloon. And I went down there just to sort of check it out lately. <clears throat> and although the restaurant is closed, the saloon is not. Yeah, there, I, th I think I saw outdoor seating there, although maybe- Yeah, you can people. go inside to order your drink and, and then you can go outside and walk around while you're drinking it. So, and then across the street, of course, is the hotel that used to be a brothel. And uh, back when they first kind of opened it up more recently, I took a tour through there and the uh, rooms are all named after the ladies that work there. Yeah, there's a great sign on that hotel that kind of, it's a little ambiguous. <laughs> yeah. Whether, whether it was a but brothel anyway, or not. Port Cost is a wonderful little spot to just kind of go. And there's two, two beaches there where you can land a kayak pretty easily. And you can scamper across the railroad tracks, but making sure that you look both directions and listen and don't go scampering in front of any trains, please. Um, so, you know, it's accessible from the water and also the road. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful little town, a population 183. And as I said, this photographer, Lewis Stewart, this is where he lived. Um, his wife, Dee Stewart, is on the call. And uh, she, so I've had a good time talking to her. Um, you know, I said, oh, I know it's, it's been rough during this pandemic for older people that many of them feel very isolated. And she said, you never feel isolated in Port Costa. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, just a wonderful place. And um, they, she's offered to, to get me a tour of the museum there. 
um, when we're able to do things like that. And I'd really like that. This, by the way, this ship, so Port Costa was part of the Transcontinental Railroad and the trains would go to Port Costa and then get on this ferry and go across the Carquina Strait and then continue to the East Coast. So it really was a very important spot, you know, back in the 19th century. And, and now it's much smaller, but just a really charming place. Um, this is the view, by the way, from Dee's house. And she looks out at uh, Benicia and this is just a wonderful photograph by Lewis. Um, let's talk about the George Miller Trail because that's a, just another really special place, not far. So here's Port Costa down here and you continue along the Carquinas Scenic Drive to this place, which is only for pedestrians and bicyclists. And um, Lee, I think you were gonna tell us a bit about the George Miller Trail. Sure, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite places in this area. I might be a little bit biased uh, since I, I am a Bay Trail guy and I did work on that trail to get it done. Uh, this shows a little bit of the elevation changes. This is kind of the ribbon cutting that happened out here. But it's just, uh, I just want to point out actually that's George Miller. Uh, he used to be a congressional member out in that area and he actually helped secure $10 million in uh, transportation funds to help East Bay Regional Park District uh, finish a bunch of Bay Trail projects, including this section of uh, George Miller Trail, which is why it got named after him. Um, and, it was, and who, who's this guy next to him? Uh, well, that, that might be me a few <laughs> years ago, a little younger. My hair might have been a little bit darker back, back in the day. <laughs> right next to uh, Janet McBride, who's the executive director for the Ridge Trail project. So it's a, it's a very small world that we live in. Uh, yeah, and if, if you were there, by the way, and you want to mention that in chat, that would be a really cool thing. I have a feeling there's some others on the call who, who, were, who were at this incredible, this opening of this great resource. Probably it opened, and when it opened in 2014, as you can see, there were a lot of people there. I'm pretty sure we had a couple hundred folks there. Um, if you go back to that previous slide real quick, uh, Rodney, I want to point people out to look at the two, re the retaining walls on one side, right? The wood retaining walls. And it's harder to see on the left side. That's actually Janet again over on the left. But near the fences, there's uh, some concrete retaining walls. Uh, just want you guys to remember that as we see the next few photos. So this, uh, this trail was actually a uh, $5.5 million to finish. And this is the reason why. It used to be a roadway that started falling apart basically and sloughing apart as you can see from these photos. So they sort of uh, uh, abandoned it. Uh, and then there was years, about 20 years of planning basically to go through this and figure out how do, we, how do we turn this into something that's still good for people in the community and the Bay Trail was on here as a planned uh, trail. And this is the result of it right here after all that work. This is one entrance. I think this is from the uh, Martinez side of things essentially. And this one is from the Port Costa side. So it's a wonderful trail. It gets you out there. You see spectacular views of the bay, uh, uh, not the bay, the Carquinez Strait, sorry, and the bridges out there. This is one of the viewing points. And uh, next couple of photos, you'll really get a sense of uh, how amazing the experience can be out there. Uh, this is one of the great um, uh, bench spots that you can hang out at. Um, you know, this is a pretty early morning shot, as you can see from the shadows there. Uh, you get some great light out there. Yeah, this is going to, some of the contenders for the best park bench on the Bay Trail are going to be on the George Miller Trail. Now, is this also, is it also the Ridge Trail at this point, Simone? No, so it's not quite the Ridge Trail. We are on the Ridge right above it. Yeah, because I think you connect to it, right? Because I did that mm -hmm. Hewlett Hornbeck Trail. Yeah, which that's is, it. That's amazing. And we're not even talking, like this is one of the many really great places we're not even talking about on the program that um, it will be in the show notes um, yeah. that I loved and I will definitely go back to. So yeah, George Miller Trail. And, and uh, we had a picture, let me go back to that. We had a picture of someone in a wheelchair and I'm always being asked like, what are the, you know, is this good for mobility? And I'd say it, it is like the great surface um, the grade makes it a little bit of a challenge um, because it's not flat, but I still think you'd, you'd probably be fine there in a wheelchair or a walker as long as you're ready to deal with some of those hills. You know, if I can just jump in, the gentleman who's leading that parade on the bike is, is 
with us tonight, Bob Berman, right That's, there. Is this Bob? Yep. Yeah, it is Bob. That's, That's great. Bob. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, Bob is actually, Bob, if you want to, well, Bob's going to be joining, he uh, lives in Benicia, and when we talk about Benicia, he's going to tell us about um, a very special uh, place in Benicia that he pointed out to me today that I, I haven't even visited yet. So that's really cool. It's great to see, I, I talked to Bob, I hadn't actually seen him, so very cool. And, and I, I saw somebody asking a little bit about details of the trail about the uh, distances. It's roughly about two miles, just a little bit under two miles long. Uh, there's uh, parking areas on both sides of the trail. One uh, is called the Port Costa staging area and the other one's called the Nedgley staging area. Port Costa is probably the one that's going to be closest uh, if you want to access it and not have to walk very far. Nedgley um, is pretty far away actually from the entry point and you'd have to take some of the other more rustic uh, dirt trails to be able to get to it. And a lot of that information is on East Bay Regional Parks uh, site. I'll, I'll post that in the chat. Yeah, this is one of the real treasures of the Bay Area. And, uh, and you know, George Miller was someone who was a, was a tireless advocate for public space. So it's great that it's named after him. But let's move on to the Franklin Ridge Ranch Trails, which um, we're going we're gonna to focus on the Mount Wanda Trail. And I, before we start, Simone, talking about it, I just want to point out, like, I, I noticed something really curious on the maps. So we see like, you go on the trail and then Mount Helen is to the north and Mount Juan is to the south, or sometimes Mount Helen is to the north and Mount Juan is to the south. And then on Google Maps, again, Mount Juan is to the north and Mount Helen is to the south. And then it made me realize like John Muir, you know, he was not around that much. He did a lot of traveling and he, so he wasn't home much and he might not have been good at telling his two daughters a part it's named after he had two daughters named Wanda and Helen and so maybe in honor of him um, they they like interchange the names but I thought maybe we do a little poll and see if folks here like you know we maybe we can vote on which one is Mount Helen and which one is Mount Wanda so let me launch yeah. this poll that sounds I'm, great you know I'm feeling really great right now that I typically I get to make the maps for the Ridge Trail but I didn't make this one and I'm feeling pretty good about it at this moment. I will say you know some of the best a lot of mountains and, and maps in history um, like little hidden surprises are in there and that's for locals to know local knowledge so maybe uh, you know that's a that's what everyone was thinking when they <laughs> named these maps. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is good. This is like, so this is why we're Bay Trail Confidential because we uncover <laughs> the really secret. interesting stuff. Now the funny and thing- And nobody about, knows which mountain. I'm gonna give you like, like five seconds to finish the poll, but I want you guys to know it's kind of neck and neck right now. So, and, and you know, and, uh, <laughs> We've got somebody in the chat telling us that the higher peak is Mount Wanda based on historic journals. So there you go. Uh, and it, so then Mount Wanda, I think the higher one is the one to the south. And let me share the results. It looked like Mount Wanda was the winner. So people kind of, you know, people, no one wants to argue with Google, right? <laughs> Google says that Mount Wanda is the one to the north. Maybe it is. But with all that aside, let's start talking about this. I mean, I, we, we're having a little fun here, but let's talk about this really great place, Simone. So, you know, you just added a new section to this, the, the Almond Ranch. Yeah. This, like, how, did, like, how much work was that? What, what went into making that happen? So um, we were so excited to, as you can see on this old map, um, that was a planned section. And in October of last year, the um, Almond Ranch Trail officially opened up. So that is another 1.6 miles. And in total, this area, there's a great, it's about a five miles that are called this the Franklin Ridge Ranches. And uh, we opened this up in partnership with John Muir Land Trust, um, who is an excellent partner and they do a wonderful job of conserving the land, um, specifically around Franklin Ridge and around the John Muir National Historic Site. So they own several of these ranches and they are still acquiring other, other ranches in the area to preserve the heritage, preserve the land. It's really important for conservation of wildlife and habitat connectivity. Um, so they have been working on this for, 
I would assume that this had been in the pipeline for, for dec decades. That's kind of how long it takes to do a lot of these big trail projects. Um, but we only got to open, they built the trail very quickly, in fact. So they built it in, um, I think in early 2020, they just knocked it out and then um, opened it up officially in October. Um, and so now there's a big section for everyone to enjoy. You can park at the base of Mount Wanda and hike up and over to um, kind of through Almond Ranch. And then you can make it a loop by going on, which you can see here, the Contra Costa, it's called the Contra Costa Feeder Trail. It was a like historic stagecoach um, area. So it's the connection between Richmond and Martinez. Um, so you can make it a loop or you can keep going straight and um, dead end a little bit farther down um, down the line, but uh, but it's a really beautiful area and there's stunning views of the bay and uh, I don't know, I, I think it's an excellent hike. So either in springtime when the hills are beautiful and green or when everything's golden um, are my favorite times to go. <laughs> yeah, it, this is a great time to go. It's, you know, it's nice and cool. Uh, it, and we just, the views were, were just, you know, they were just amazing. And I went during the week and there weren't very many people there. It may, may get a few more people on the weekend. Um, I do want to point out, you, you, you know, it's pretty, some pretty steep climbs mm -hmm. and um, it's dirt. So this probably is not the best place for anyone with a mobility issue. Yeah, I don't think that it's, it's not one of our better wheelchair accessible areas. It is um, a lot of uh, kind of wider, um, wider paths and fire roads, which is kind of what it tends to be in the East Bay. Um, and I, I guess uh, also wanted to point, point out that it is um, for hikers, bikers, and equestrians. So it's full multi-use, or at least most of the trail is. And where yeah. it's not, it's clearly marked on our maps. But. In, in lots of park benches. Um, yeah. which I was like, that's super important to me. And we're, we're, we, we talk quite a bit about park benches on this show because that's where I have my lunch. So, um, <laughs> you know, just, just a delightful place. If you have not been there, and, you know, again, we're going to have our show notes page up. It'll have maps of all these places and links to the Ridge Trail and the other organizations um, to get you the information so you can go for yourself. Um, it's like right off of Highway 4, so it's easy to get to. And do we have an idea how long this trail is? You, it's about five miles, I think, from Mount Wanda to the end of Almond Ranch. Is that, that that's what I... Yeah, I so, so this section is, I guess, for us, it's a little bit hard because we keep going in either direction. We can go all the way down to this Nedgedly staging area that Lee was talking about, but you can do just the, the full complete ridge trail in that area is 4.7 miles, but you can kind of make a loop out of it and that's about five miles. So it's a good, it's a nice little chunk, not too, not too easy, not too hard. Just, yeah, a good day. Yeah, and you, and you guys have, you're connecting all these things. So someday you're going to be able to like backpack from Berkeley all the way to Martinez through these hills. Someday you might be able to backpack from south of San Jose all the way <laughs> over to these hills. So yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> well, let's move across the water to uh, Solano County and Benicia, which um, there's just so much to say about Benicia. Uh, and I think Ben, you're gonna you're gonna help me talk about this. Um, let me mention a couple things first. First of all, this is a good place for if you have a mobility issue. The you know sidewalks along the bay are in really good shape. It's very scenic. Um, there's a water. We're going to talk about the water trail access. There's the state recreation area. Um, and then I, first, I wanted to talk about the name Benicia. So it's named for Francisca Benicia Cairo de Vallejo, who. Um, does, does anybody, anyone, guess know what the relationship was between, the, between like her and uh, in the person who Vallejo was named after? Husband and wife. It was his wife, but they didn't call it Francisca. Why didn't they call it Francisca? It's because San Francisco they didn't was. Want to confuse it with San Francisco. <laughs> That's it. So, so it's Benicia, which is a very nice name. Benicia is a great name, and it's just I think it's really nice that Vallejo and Benicia, these these two cities that kind of bookend the Carquinez Strait, um, are, are named after a husband and wife. 
and it's got this great marina but what so this is bob bob's on the call and bob lives in venetia and he pointed out something really cool to me that i did not know about and it's this um bench which is um in this park what's what's the park called bob well it's the uh, venetia marina and it's the bill turnbull park so the it's turnbull the end, park the end of that spit is the turnbull park bill turnbull was a developer of the a lot of the houses in Venetia. Uh, but then this is the Bob Morris, and this was back uh, probably in the 1980s when this was put together. And the bench, it's called the Venetia bench. And uh, the bench itself on the top was a piece of driftwood that Bob then used and cast in iron and cast iron. And that, of course, is Bob Arneson, who was a famous Venetia artist and a duck. And if you ever go there, you can get on your hands and knees and look underneath the bench and there's some graffiti that Bob added to the bench. <laughs> I won't tell you what it is, but you can check it out for yourself. Oh, I got to check that out. He, 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 he's one of my favorite artists. He um, has a famous sculpture at SF MoMA called California Artist, um, which, which is a response to a, someone said that the artists in California were all brainless. So this is, it's got a hollow head and uh, beer cans and pot leaves on it. And you could just, and you used to drink with this guy, right? You would have a beer with him from time yeah, to time. Yeah, I had a lot of beers with him. <laughs> <laughs> so this is great, it's great. And he lived in Benicia and, um, you know, in my opinion, one of the great California artists. Um, we do want to talk about some other places. We've got lots of historic places in Benicia. This is the, um, this was the state capital for just a couple of years. This is the Venetia State Capitol. It's the third capital of the state of California, but it's the oldest standing capital. And it was actually the capital just for about a year, February 1853 to February 1854. Yeah, it's, it's part of this great historic district with these, these beautiful houses, um, great place to walk around or bike around. Uh, you know, and these, I'm not a very good photographer, but even I can take a decent picture of some of these places, you know. <laughs> um, and, and then we wanted to talk, we got Bob, Ben on here, we want to talk about the Ninth Street boat ramp and how that's part of the water trail. Yeah, West Ninth Street really kind of has it all in terms of water access. So you can kind of see off to the, the middle right there, there's the, the boat launch. Um, so that's primarily used by motorized craft, but can be used by a whole variety. There's an outrigger canoe club that's based there at West Ninth Street. And so they're getting out on the water regularly. Um, there's information online. They're open to the public if you're interested in just getting out for some training or some paddles. Um, and then there's also a little pocket beach as well that's off to the left hand side there that you can launch from and I know that actually some experienced kiteboarders and windsurfers will launch from there as well. Um, but just a, a beautiful park that kind of has it all and once you're on the water there you get these great views just down the strait looking up towards Diablo out to the east it's just kind of looming over everything. And then these beautiful views out to the bridge and I've been fortunate to do it at sunset. Uh, once or twice. And you have to be careful when you're out there, the currents and the, the wind can get a little strong, but uh, you're a little, if you paddle towards Benicia State Recreation Area, there's some nice sheltered areas there. And it's just uh, a beautiful spot to launch and start your water trail uh, excursion. Yeah, and we've got, these, these are some pictures of the um, State Recreation Area, which is just to the west of downtown. And also a really, really nice spot. We went walking here a couple days ago along here, great views. And then when you turn the corner, you get views of the bridge, the Zampa Bridge down there. And here's another one of Lewis Stort's great photographs. He just loved getting up in the air and getting these, these photographs that, that show us the, the um, Cartina Strait at its best. And we're gonna talk more about the water trail in just a minute. Um, did wanna talk about one more place and then we'll talk about the bridge to bridge bike ride. So. Um, I think Penny, you were going to talk about the about Glen Cove. Was it Penny or, or Simone? Because this is great. Because this is where the ridge and bay trails come together. Um, although there is there's kind of limited parking at this area. There's two, actually two kind of areas of Glen Cove. There's one with this yacht club, where I don't think you're going to find a good place to park, but you can hike there from uh, the Glen Cove. Uh, what's it called? The Glen Cove Park. You can hike along the water. So, a, so Rodney, 
Yep. You can also launch and land kayaks there, but it's good to check with the harbor master first because it is private. But uh, we have launched and landed at uh, the marina. So along here, maybe? No, right at one of the docks. Oh, okay, they'll let, they'll let you in here to do that. Yeah, and you, it's because it's private, it's good to ask permission, but they've always been very friendly and very accommodating. And um, so that worked. And I guess, so Rodney, right now the Bay Trail and the Ridge Trail, our alignment kind of goes, if you can see that, that road going around the marina and up, uh, like up north, um, at towards, uh, I'm not sure if you can kind of, it kind of juts just out so up, <laughs> up well, into the next, the, the next place east would be the um, Glen Cove Waterfront Park, and that's right. where they all come together. And the Delta Trail, too. Oh, is that right? Yeah. This yeah. Is, is this the Ridge Trail here, though? Um, well, so this is a, a great time to talk about a gap <laughs> that oh, we okay. have, um, which is at um, at Glen Cove, one of the gaps that were all of that Lee, Ben, um, Liz, who is our trail director that is on the call, we're all working on it, that Bob, we're, we're trying to get a trail kind of up and around Glen Cove, as you can see, kind of this, it looks a little bit, um, it's, yeah, so, so this is something that, that we're working on actively and, and we actually, we need everyone's help at some point uh, to, get this, to get this on the ground. But, um, but another, another area where the, the Ridge Trail and the Bay Trail will be connected together. So, so does that mean that this area here is not official trail yet? That's right. It's, I think people are using that informally, but we're trying to get it so that it's actually hopefully a paved trail that more people can use and it'll be nicer for a broader group of folks. Well, here's, here's that an trail, example. But that trail is available for people to use. Uh, it's a little bit steep uh, and there's some issues with some of the steps that we're working with the city of Vallejo, uh, but you can use that to an overlook of the Cortinas Bridge. That, which would be Right. right, this there. right here, it, which has these wonderful chairs. It was, it was so perfect that they left a chair for my wife and I to, you know, we were counting the cars on the, uh, on I-80 coming across the bridge. It's really, really neat spot. Um, I want to talk about the bridge to bridge. So this all comes together with this bridge to bridge loop. And it's great that you're here, Bob, because you, you were kind of involved in um, kind of advocating for some of this trail. But I got, I've done it a couple times. It, it can go, shortest you'd be, you could do it would be about 23 miles and there's a fair amount of elevation gain, especially on the uh, Contra Costa side. We do wanna point out there's some hazards. It's not for inexperienced cyclists, um, but there's not, there's hard, there's very little car traffic on the Contra Costa side because the Carquinas Strait does not go through for cars, but it does go through for bikes when you go on that, um, that uh, George Miller Trail. So in here, you know, we've got bike tr bike path going across the bridge here. Here, here's my little um, ride that I did uh, going through um, to Port Costa. And you can see, it's like, you know, you're doing some climbing here, but this is a section where you're not dealing with a lot of cars. Then you've got protected bike trail going across the bridge. Uh, I went through Benicia and I was going to try to go through quickly and I just couldn't because it's just so cool, you know, so I had to backtrack and just kind of coming back through uh, Vallejo and then back onto the, um, the Zampa Bridge. So that was, that was, that's a really fun ride. And like I said, it's um, a lot of it, you're not dealing with car traffic, but you do have to be a little careful. Hold on. How long did that take you to do? Well, I, well, I'm not in a big hurry when I'm doing something that nice. So I, I spent probably like five hours, but you could do it in two or three hours. If you're fast, you could probably do it in, in around two. Um, well, it looked like your little, uh, your said, your, um, your trip said three and a half hours. That was that that's, fancy little presentation. It was three and a half hours on the bike, but I just had to, there's so many places where I just had to stop, you know, so many beautiful places, take a picture, eat my lunch. You know, when I do this, I'm not in a big hurry. This is the town of Crockett. We're not even going to talk about Crockett, but boy, I would, what a, it just seems like a really fascinating place. It's kind of dominated by the, the sugar plant there. <laughs> uh, these are the beautiful roads that go between Crockett and Port Costa. Port Costa is down here. And this is the Carquinas 
um, shoreline scenic, scenic park. This is the hazard I wanted everyone to know about. There's cracks in the road. And if you're a cyclist, you really do not want to hit these things. And if a car is passing you, that's when you have to be careful because you don't have so many choices on where to be. So this is what we wanted to point out. Here's a bunch of cyclists in uh, Port Costa. The um, Grizzly Peak Century um, has gone through there. And uh, Mr. Stort took a great picture of them there. This is the George Miller Trail, which we already talked about. Martinez, we didn't even talk about the, um, the, shore, the uh, waterfront park there, which is really beautiful. This is the bike access on the Carquinas Bridge, back through Benicia, back on the bridge. So recommending that, and then these are all the places that we could have talked about that would have been even, you know, it would have been great, like this Hewlett Hornbeck Trail, one of your trails, Simone, that I just loved. Um, the the um, Martinez Shoreline Park is wonderful. Lots of great places to visit and it, it's a very compact area. So hopefully if you don't live in that area, I've ins we've inspired you to go try to check it out. But now we wanna talk about something else that um, is really a great um, public benefit for us, the, the water trail in Penny and Simone, Penny and I'm sorry, Penny and Ben. Um, I want you to tell us like, what, really what is the water trail and how did it come about? So shall I start with a little history? Yeah, I'd like to hear that. Okay, so this is just going to be a quick story of what grassroots can do. So I guess back in about the early 2000s in San Francisco, there was a little group of Bay Area sea kayakers and some rowers who were sitting around grumping over pizza and beer about how the shoreline in San Francisco Bay was disappearing to development and how the shoreline access that they'd been using for years was disappearing and that something needed to be done, darn it. And so um, instead of having another beer, or maybe they did, um, <laughs> they got busy. They formed an organization called Bay Access and Bay Access examined lots of possibilities and decided that with nine counties and umpteen cities uh, surrounding San Francisco Bay, a regional water trail would be a good solution. And we studied other water trails from all over the country. And we were not at all surprised to discover that the San Francisco Bay water trail was going to be unique. And that's because it was actually a web instead of a linear trail. So with help from the National Park Service Rivers and Trails Conservation Assistance Program, we figured out what to do next. Um, our mentor was a genius named Barbara Rice, and she told us to get everybody that might possibly be involved together in a meeting and get them on board. So we had a breakfast meeting uh, and invited everybody we could think of. And then we were surprised when not only did they all come, but they sent their head honchos. So after breakfast, we presented our vision and asked how anybody in the room might be able to help us. And there was a long and very awful silence. And then uh, Will Travis from BCDC, the uh, Bay Conservation and Development Commission, he got up and he said, I guess that will be us. And BCDC has been an enthusiastic supporter of the water trail ever since. So as models, we looked at the Bay and the Ridge trails and how they got started. And we decided that we were gonna take a legislative route. And so Lonnie Hancock in Berkeley loaned us an aid and that aid, uh, her aid taught us about legislation and helped us write the Water Trail Act. And I have to tell you, the scariest thing I ever did in my whole life was knocking on doors and cold calling legislators in Sacramento, asking them to support the trail. But they did. And in 2005, the Water Trail Bill passed almost unanimously. And as directed by the legislation, BCDC took the next two years to develop a plan for the entire trail. And the Coastal Conservancy then took over implementing the plan. Today we have, I think about 50 designated sites on the trail and we aren't finished yet. 
And I think at this point, let's have Ben Botkin tell about uh, how this all happened and what the future holds. Yeah, and I do, I do want to point out that, you know, a lot of great things begin with pizza and beer. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, if you, if you want something, if you, if you think something needs to be improved, that's a good place to start, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, Ben, tell us, tell us more about this. And like, really, what is the water trail? Like, is it, how should we think of it? Well, yeah, great introduction, Penny. I mean, it really was just a grassroots effort that made made this all happen. And I've been the beneficiary of being able to help plan and uh, implement the water trail since 2015. So the water trail is really a programmatic vision to preserve the access to the bay that we have right now for non-motorized small boats. And so this is all types of non-motorized craft from kayaks to stand-up paddle boards to team crafts like outrigger canoes, whale boats, um, dragon boats, uh, as well as some of the board sailing, uh, kite boarding and windsurfing. So protect the access that we have and then work to strategically enhance it as well. So improving the access points where they are and then where it's appropriate, uh, identifying and providing new sites um, it's also planning for, for new growth. So we work very closely with BCDC as projects are coming through the pipeline. And there's been a lot of shoreline development in the last few decades, as I think we all, all know. And, uh, and so BCDC is critical in making sure that public access to the shoreline is protected and provided as part of that process. And so the water trail works very closely with the Bay Trail in, in providing those access points and planning for them. Um, it's also about promoting safety education. And so the bay, you know, isn't a, a small lake uh, or, you know, it's, it's a pretty dangerous body of water and you have to know what you're doing before you get out there. And so the water trail's got a, a lot of resources and trying to make it uh, easily accessible for people so they know how to get onto the water and how to do it safely. Um, it's also about increasing funding. So we are funded by the State Coastal Conservancy and the Coastal Conservancy provides a, a grant program where we're able to provide grants to nonprofits and jurisdictions around the Bay to improve access. And so we've funded so far about seven projects, uh, about $700,000 that have really made a big difference in enhancing the ADA accessibility of some sites, as well as just um, providing completely new access in some locations. Um, and then really, you know, working to provide opportunities for everyone to be able to access the bay. So there's a, a lot of barriers to getting into the water, whether it's having to own your own boat, to store it, to transport it. Um, and so working to break down some of those barriers and make sure that everyone has access to the water. So really just an incredible program. And, um, you know, there's so many amazing places to explore. It goes all the way up the Napa River, all the way up the Petaluma River, as far east as Big Break um, there in, uh, in eastern Contra Costa County, and then all the way down into the South Bay in Alviso. And uh, hopefully you'll get to talk a little bit next week or next uh, Bay Trail Confidential about the boat launch in Alviso. It's really a, a nice facility, but so many miles of shoreline. We like to say that uh, the waters of the bay, there's over 500 square miles of navigable water. So by far the Bay Area's largest open space. Uh, and only the only open space as well that has uh, whales and seals in it as well. So um, lots to explore. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I haven't been a kayaker and I had a friend um, who I know you know, Penny, a uh, woman named Barbara, who took me out kayaking. And um, boy, it's just a totally different way to see uh, see the water or see the animals, uh, the birds, you know, like you're, you're like kind of on the same level with them. And um, I actually have not, I wanted to get out on the bay and unfortunately circumstances prevented that from happening before the show, but I do have plans to go out on the bay, maybe from Crane Cove, which is one of your newest water trail spots. Um, yeah, that's that really a really spectacular park that the port just finished uh, a few months ago, uh, a nice big old beach there, um, and future plans are to put a, a boating center in there as well with another one of the co-founders of the Water Trail potentially uh, being named after, but uh, yeah, that's really a spectacular park if you get the chance to go to Crane Cove, well worth the, the trip. Oh, I'm definitely going to do it, and then the other place I was really interested in was um, the, um, the, the San Pablo Bay National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, because, you know, I enjoyed hiking around there, but there's a limit to where you can go. And I realized like in a kayak, you can see all these other places that are otherwise inaccessible. Well, the Cullinan Ranch boat launch is a, a great launching point to get out and explore San Pablo Bay. It's uh, a nice facility there. And yeah, miles of slew is really a, a neat area to see lots of wildlife. 
Well, so we're not going to be we're not going to be done with the water trail. Now, the one place that you guys warned me about was the Carquinez Strait is not a place for beginners because something about wind, tides, and current. Um, these these three things are very important, and you really need to pay attention. And in the in the uh, Carquinez Strait, you know, you may not be able to go where you want to go. Yep, and they can change on you pretty quick too. So that's the other thing. You got to, to, to look at your forecast and plan out your trip well ahead of time. And sfbaywatertrail.org has a lot of great trip planning resources. Uh, the Bay Area Sea Kayakers Trip Planner is also a terrific resource. Lots of great information, but definitely important to, uh, to do your research ahead of time and uh, to maybe take some, some classes or go out with a, a tour guide if, uh, if you're unfamiliar with an area. Great way to safely get out on the water yeah it wouldn't it would look bad for bay trail confidential if i if, if i had some kind of mishap this is a great place this is mission creek um i i actually in normal times i'm a guide at the ballpark there and i know this area very well and i would just love to be able to paddle around there so um what what else um so we'll, we'll put information out for people to um learn more about the water trail but I think the bottom line is you guys are trying to facilitate people like me who are new to this, being able to get out on the water. That's like a key part of your mission. And uh, you know, we should take advantage of it. Exactly. And there's a lot of great clubs and concessionaires and uh, organizations that are doing a lot of great work around the Bay. Um, you can find uh, a list of them broken down by county so you can know what clubs are, are located nearby. And, you know, I, I got to say, it's just about the friendliest group of people you can imagine at, at each one of these. Every time I've gone to to try out dragon boating or to try out whale boating or some of these other sports, everyone's just been so welcoming. And it's just a great way to get outside, get some exercise, meet some community. And of course, a lot of these clubs have had to either scale back or, or put their programs on hold during COVID here, but um, fingers crossed that uh, before too long, uh, we'll be able to get started up again. Well, well, Penny and Ben, thanks for telling us about the water trail. And then I did want to start talking about like, there's sort of this family of trails and we've got Simone from the Ridge Trail, and, you know, you guys from the water trail. And of course, we're the Bay Trail. And I did think of them as sort of like sibling trails, like maybe there's a trail family and you just wonder about them. Like is, you know, like what is the birth order? So let me, ask, I'm gonna put that out as a poll. Like who do you think is the oldest of the trail family siblings? Let me put that out as a, I'll give you like 20 seconds to fill this out. Who do you think? Bay Trail, Ridge Trail, Water Trail? Bay Trail. Do you think the Bay Trail? Okay, three, two, one. And it looks like yeah, the Bay Trail wins. And um, it is, that is in fact the, the case that it was, the Bay Trail um, began in 1986. The Ridge Trail was really shortly after. So they're like, you know, the, the kind of like normal siblings. And then um, the Water Trail is like the um, beloved child of, of the, um, whoever the parents are of all these trails, right? <laughs> So then what about the size? Like, again, we're going we're gonna to do the same poll again. And um, who do you think, like, which is the biggest or the longest of these, uh, of these siblings? Hold on, I got to relaunch this. And like, yeah, who do you think is the, um, the biggest? Oh, I see a really good question from Gregory Trevor Rice asking yes. about completed or proposed. Oh, I would say completed, months. completed. We don't care about proposed. You can tell us about all your, your plans. <laughs> um, but you know, we, we, you know, show us the money, right? right. <laughs> so three, two, one, I'm ending the poll. I'm sharing the poll. We have a bias here because we are Bay Trail confidential, but actually, first of all, you can't really measure because the water trail is 1600 square miles. It's the water trail. But the, so you guys are the, the biggest in terms of area for sure. The Ridge Trail is the longest, we're 390 miles in the- um, Rodney, Bay. actually, I'm gonna correct you. It's 393.5 now. Uh, <laughs> We've got a recent update. <laughs> Mia culpa. Yeah, but Rodney, the water trail can be around the circumference of the bay 
thus it's got as many miles going that way <laughs> as the bay has shoreline and then there's the back and forth across it so between the web and the linear part i think the water trail has it hands down okay so but you know as as all good parenting folks know uh each child is unique in their own way <laughs> I think that's, I think that's true. And, you know, I think you guys look, Liz, like you guys can play well together. In fact, like where the Bay Trail really wanted us to invite the Water Trail and the Ridge Trail to be on this program. And I'm so glad they did. But, I do Lee, think we, but, but Lee, parents do have favorites. So I've been told. <laughs> well, so this, this, let's talk about favorites. So I'm going to put the question this way. If if the Bay Trail, the Ridge Trail, and the Water Trail play Monopoly against each other, who do you want to win? Who do you think should win if it's the Bay Trail against the Ridge Trail and the Water Trail? I'm going to tell you right now that we'd get Park Place. You'd get Park Place. <laughs> yeah, but, but the Bay Trail would get the railroads. Yeah, I, I think the Bay Trail would be the city mouse and the Ridge Trail would be the country mouse, right? Yeah, you, yeah. Like, Waterworks, that's definitely on the Bay Trail. Um, the electrical thing, you know, but yeah, all the, all the really, the, um, the high rent stuff is going to be Ridge Trail, I think. I'm going to, okay, three, two, one, ending the poll, sharing the results. So it does, looks like, you know, this is a Bay Trail biased <laughs> group, I think. <laughs> but, but I'm going to do one more poll because, you know, we have the Monopoly game, right? And the question is going to be like, which one of them throws the tantrum that ends the Monopoly game? So Bay Trail, Ridge Trail, Water Trail. Which, which one's the most volatile? <laughs> and I'll give you like five, four, three, two, one. Oh, Ben, Ben, you're never going to want to come on the show again, I think. <laughs> I was on my best behavior too. <laughs> no, Ben is yeah. such a sweet guy. I thought it was going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, don't be on such good behavior. I, Benny I wanna, with their pizza and beer, I think. <laughs> I do want to say, like Ben, Ben gave me the most photographs to use for the program. You saw all those great photographs of the of the um, water trail that we had in that segment. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, seriously, I love all of you guys and um, we're all such beneficiaries, like to have all this public space, it belongs to all of us. That's kind of a theme of this show. And, you know, we, it's a place where we all come together. So well, I'm grateful to all three. Um, do you want to mention a couple of other trails? You've got cousins. Mm -hmm. And I think we might even have folks, I heard that we're folks yeah. from the Delta Trail may be joining. Jeremy and if they're out there in chat, them. like definitely, we're going to yeah. put links to all of these things, but there's the, um, the Delta Trail, which, is it a water trail in the Delta? At one time, it was going to be a water trail, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, consider the Delta, wow. Yeah. And there's, there's, there is great places to go around there. And then the Juan Batista de Anza is a National Historic Trail um, because of the exploration that de Anza did on the Carquina Strait. So a lot of it, I think a lot of that um, converges with the Ridge Trail and maybe the Bay Trail too. Yeah, well, and so maybe now would be a good time for us to talk about. So, you know, together you're mentioning we are this family and really in the Carquina Strait Scenic Loop, it is the area in the Bay Area where all of us coincide and we have all are actively working together and get a chance to meet monthly to talk about the Carquina Strait Scenic Loop Trail, which is all of us together um, going around doing that bridge to bridge loop is part of it, but also going up on the ridge lines. So it's a 50 mile regional trail that we're all working on um, that is such an exciting resource that it's over 10,000 acres of public lands, as you were saying, Rodney. So um, yeah, so we're excited to be working together as a family here. <laughs> so you guys are a family that can really do great things. It's like, reminds me of the Partridge family, you know, like, you know, this family at all their, their sibling rivalry, but boy, did they make great music, right? Um, <laughs> We should, well, I won't put a poll up about that, but <laughs> seriously, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And um, we, we, you know, the fam this is a family that really works on all of our behalf. So. And but Rodney, just to answer some of the questions that you had and some other folks had. So the Delta Trail started out as the idea for a biking, walking trail, but they're really 
a do it all type of uh, trail. They're they're really open at looking at the water trail element of it as well. So they're going to be the most versatile of all the family members, I guess, in the long run. And Juan Bautista de Anza is probably uh, the most well traveled. We'll just say. I mean, the whole concept was about Juan Bautista de Anza and his uh, travels, basically, to explore the western area, especially in California. Uh, so that trail actually expands well out of the Bay Area, I think also into other states. Well, that's, we're eventually gonna be talking about trails like greenways that, that do go beyond California. Um, you know, yeah, someone just said all the way into Mexico. So, you know, that is a, it's a really important concept. Um, we're, you know, it's getting a little late. I wanna move on to our photography contest because we had wonderful pictures of bridges. I had eight submissions. This by the way is my picture. And the rule was they all had to be better than mine. That was not hard for these guys to achieve. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys five pictures and I'm gonna put up a poll and let you vote on them. So here's A, we'll go through these twice. Here's B, C, D and E. We had eight submissions. We, we um, kind of wheedled it down to these five. And let me, let me get the poll up for you guys so you can start voting. But I'm going to go through them again. So here's again is A, B, C. D, E, and then here, I'm gonna show you all of them so you, you get a chance to see them all together and kind of think about which one you like best. And um, by the way, all of us who are guests on the program or speakers, um, we don't get to vote. So only you guys in the audience, it's like a great privilege of being in the audience. And I'm gonna give you guys like 10 more seconds to, to um, complete this poll and then I will share the results. Um, but it was really great getting all these pictures and wanna thank all the contestants. Okay, that, that, let's see, there's, um, these are the eight people that submitted them in three, two, one, I'm ending the poll. And the winner of the Bay Trail map cards is going to be E. And second place is going to be B. Let's go back to those because I really, okay, I guess we can see them here. So um, looks like you guys, you guys, this is just pretty, yeah, I have to say, I really like this. I didn't, I had, I didn't vote on any of these things, by the way. I, I, I um, recused myself from that, but we are gonna be talking about the Richmond San Rafael Bridge on our May show. We're gonna do a whole show that spotlights that. So I'm, I'm really grateful to the person who submitted this picture because we're gonna, I think we're gonna wanna use that. Um, and then uh, second place was B, which is the Carquinez Strait, right? In fact, I was walking a, a, up, it's um, taken from the Crockett Hills Regional Park, and we were just walking there on a Tuesday, yes, I said it was yesterday, and, um, I, and we could see the shadow of the bridge. It was about the same time of day that this picture was taken, and then I got in touch with the person who submitted it and said, I think I know where you took that picture. So they're both great pictures. I'm doing a photography program on March 8th, um, with the Schnetzlers who have been on this program and do a lot of great Bay photography. You'll see that in the email that goes out tomorrow. Um, and then our April contest is gonna be um, plants. So flowers, trees, plants on the Bay Trail. Um, I'll provide information. We're gonna change the submission just a little bit because we want, we're hoping you guys give us permission to use all these photos, especially the Bay Trail project. So there'll be some language associated with that that we'll want you to sign off on. Um, and you'll submit using the Bay Trail Confidential website. The deadline's gonna be March 31st at midnight. I got two really nice submissions after the deadline for this one and I couldn't, we couldn't consider them. So sorry about that. And then the show is gonna be on April 7th. Here's the photo credits for the folks who, whose photos you've been seeing in the program. And I did really wanna point out Lewis Stewart. This is um, the gentleman who had so many of these great photographs of the Carquina Strait. Um, sadly, he died three years ago. Um, this is a picture of him in Port Costa where he spent many wonderful years with his wife, Dee, who was on the program. We're really, really thrilled she could join us. And um, we will see more of his pictures during the Q&A. 
But now I have something really special. I have to give me a second. To, I have to figure out how to do this. But our, our theme song of Happy Trails, we're going to crank that up. And we have a new performance of it by um, some friends of mine, a friend of mine. So give me a second here for our Happy Trails. And then I share that. Here you go. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Until we meet again. God, I just love that. <laughs> it's so good and it was it was created for us yeah it makes it even better we we got we didn't get in trouble but we got flagged for using a copyrighted um recording for the last program so i had a friend of mine make that He's, and then you did the video um that's me yeah i i, I um, recorded that with my iphone from um, a location in uh, el cerrito on the bay trail no oh, so great. that was by my buddy Jason Myers, really great guy. Oh, let me, we don't need that. And then here is our next program, which, boy, I don't know how I got that little character in there, but that's pretty good. So we're going to be next on April 7th. And we're going to be talking about Alviso in the Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge. Um, some thank yous. I want to thank yeah. um, Bob Berman, who was, um, who, who was chiming in on uh, the Benicia stuff, um, Corinne Debray. Maureen Gaffney of the Bay Trail Project, Jason for that song. My wife, Sarah, who was moderating tonight, letting you guys all in from the, uh, the waiting room and then Dee Stort for, she gave me a wonderful um, set of her husband's photographs. And then Daniel Zamaloa was the guy who um, did the music for the slideshow. And I just wanna say again, thank you to everybody who has given us the Bay Trail, Ridge Trail, Water Trail and other public spaces. And now we're gonna do Q and A. I think I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna, I wanna share these photographs of uh, Lewis Stewart. And I'm gonna make it so you guys can unmute. We're, we'll ask you to raise, to raise your hand so we don't have people talking at the same time, but we would love to get questions from you guys. Rodney, just one quick point before we get started. Uh, someone pointed out, and I, I think it's correct, that uh, the winner of second place actually was photo C from the polls. Oh, yeah, not thanks B. Thanks for catching that. Yeah. Uh, well, hold on a second. Let's go back to that. Um, I'm going to go back and just want to give credit where credit's due, and I apologize for that. Sometimes we get a little, let's see. So we'll see, that's a, that is a really nice photograph also. So, um, and I think I um, what, wanna, well, we will be, we actually have a second and third place. I think B was third place. And the second and third place get Bay Trail maps. And um, first place is gonna get the Bay Trail map cards, Package. which you're gonna yep. love. And now I'm gonna make it so you guys can unmute yourselves if you want. And I do see Jim has his hand raised. Jim, go ahead and unmute un, uh, yourself and question or comment. Jim Devlin. Do you have to unmute him? Oh, do, oh maybe I screwed that yeah. up. Maybe. Yeah. I'm sorry, be... that's a mistake. I don't know how my, that okay. hand got put up. Okay. Paul well, does. It, who would anyone, who else wants to chime in? If, if you don't know how to raise your hand, um, you can just wave your hand at the camera and I'll call on you. Ethel. No, I was saying go like this. 
How many, I, I'm curious if um, we've inspired some of you. Well, we, we do have some folks with it. So Greta, Greta Schnetzler, go ahead and uh, unmute and question or comment. Hi, Rodney. Um, we just wanted to know um, about the boat launch in the San Pablo Wildlife Refuge. Um, if Ben could tell us the name of it again and, and how uh, just briefly how to get there. You bet. Or it's the Cullinan Ranch boat launch. Uh, it's off of Highway 37, but you can only get uh, uh, to it from westbound Highway 37. Um, so if you're coming in from Marin County or from the west there um, on Highway 37, you're going to have to turn around at Mare Island and come back north. But it's a, a nice little boat launch. Um, I can include in the chat our link um, to the website for that site. It's kind of got a small parking area, but it's a, a very nice facility and gets you out into the marsh. And there's a, a number of you can explore the restoration area as, as well as some of the nearby sloughs. Uh, and I'll include a, a, a link in the chat here. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I just want to point out that Greta and her husband, Manu, uh, have offered to take me out in their double kayak. And I really appreciate that. I was hoping to get out there um, before this show, but I will certainly do that after afterwards sometime when it's convenient for us all. Um, so thanks for that. Other, other questions, comments? Um, we, we had so many on the on the Richmond show. Uh, we, we had, we had um, a lot of interesting interesting ideas of things people would like to see done on the Bay Trail. Um, I see Joe has his hand raised. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, this is this is great, and I'm glad to see that your your listenership has popped up since the last one, and popped up this time too. Uh, it's a real service you're doing, and I'm glad you're doing it. Thank you. Um, one thing that I'd like to see highlighted more in the future would be two things. One, you do some about transit access, but I'd like to see that more consistent and regular. Uh, you know, people, we tend to forget, many people tend to forget that there's large numbers of people in, in, in the area who, who don't have easy access to an automobile or to a reliable automobile that they can use for recreation. And, you know, uh, it's a it's an equity and uh, issue and uh, uh, and also it's a political issue because people can vote and they're not going to vote on vote for money for something that they can't ever use or can't imagine themselves using. And in line with that, uh, this is not to guilt trip anybody. I'm a white I'm an old white guy, but every face I've seen with like maybe two exceptions has been white people, and the wheeze. The use of the word we has not been, many of the uses of the word we has, has you know, been pretty, pretty narrow. Uh, you know, who is, who is we? We in the Bay Area is actually 50%, I think now, people of color and, uh, uh, you know, who are disproportionately historically and at present discriminated against in many ways. And we need to pay attention to that and there's a reason why many of these public outdoor areas are, are, are seen and felt as white areas uh, and unfriendly and unwelcoming to people of color. And I think we, all of us who use these areas and participate in these kind of forums need to pay attention to how we can change that situation. And I'll stop there. Yeah, um, well, first of all, on the transit, um, suggestion. I, I I totally agree with you. And in fact, I I try to make a point of going to most of these places without my car. Um, and on today's show, like Crockett is not really served by public transit, but Vallejo is very well served. Um, as is, uh, you can take Amtrak to Martinez. I did that, and um, you know, um, I, I I didn't take transit to Benicia, but I'm pretty sure I could. On the on the question of representation, to I totally agree with you, and and that's definitely a goal of this show. Um, we did have some discussion of that on the, on the last show right. with um, the Jari Smith representing Rich City Rides. And he kind of made the point of, um, you know, it's very important that these public places think about the needs of, um, of minority people using them and how it's not hard for them to th be thought of as unwelcome. And that's, this, this belongs to everybody. So we're gonna be doing more 
shows where we want we want that representation. Um, I promise you that. Um, so any, any of the other, uh, um, like Ethel or others, want to add to that? Thank you very much for that response. No, yeah, no, I would just absolutely agree with with what you said and. Um, any outreach that people in the audience may know that to give us leads into talking to different communities that might be interested, um, we'd be more than happy to ha have that connection. Yeah, I mean, one thing I really want to do is talk about um, um, Bayview Hunters Point and the, yeah. the incredible job that community did to um, get the PG&E plant there shut down. It's now a beautiful park right on the water. Uh, in India Basin, and it's just exactly the kind of success story we want to talk about. And there's other stories like that. We had the, the we talked about the Dotson family on the last show. I didn't point it out, but Whitney Dotson was at that um, ribbon cutting for the George Miller Trail. Um, he he and his um, father um, worked tirelessly to get the Dotson family ma um, marsh um, adjoined to Point Pinole. Um, so yeah, the, those are really important stories to tell, and I, I, I've already said it, but again, this is public, this is public space, and that means it has to be for everybody. Yeah, Rodney, I just add that the, the Water Trail and the Bay Trail get a lot of funding from the State Coastal Conservancy, and the current grant funding that we have right now is from the recent Proposition 68, which targets a lot of funding to severely disadvantaged communities. And so uh, a lot of our, our grant funds um, coming from the Coastal Conservancy are gonna be going towards those communities for the next couple of years here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that actually includes three of the cities that are along the Carquina Strait. It's an area um, that has several communities of concern. And so we're excited to be opening up more trails and opening up more access to public lands there for people to enjoy. Kind of adding it to Ben's earlier point, uh, you know, we are working with a lot of our partners basically to figure out uh, that question of equity. You know, a lot of it does come down to the funding that Ben mentioned, but at the same time, BCDC that Penny mentioned earlier, which is another great partners of ours uh, who requires, you know, private developments to provide the public access science shoreline has in the last year or so adopted their own equity and environment and justice, um, social justice platform essentially in process. So they require people to go through um, uh, 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 engaging um, basically different communities and lower um, uh, disadvantaged communities basically so that um, they are able to participate in the process of developing these public spaces. Cool, I mean, so good things are, good things are happening, but I think Joe, it's, it's really important that, that we have lots of voices pointing out inequity and, and you know, pushing us in the right direction. And, and, I, and I wanna go back to the transit thing. Hold, hold us accountable, like definitely let me know if I do a better job of that on the next show, because um, I, I shall just add that to the slides. Um, someone, someone recommended, like they wanted the mobility information. We're trying to do a better job of um, making that clear. And the transit, you know, transit, I, I actually, I don't want to have to drive places if I don't, if it, if, it's, if it can be accomplished without a car. That would be an easy enough thing for us to add in. Yep. Other questions, comments? I'm seeing lots hey. of great stuff in chat, but it's hard for me to keep up with. Hey, Rodney. Yeah, go ahead. You can't do a loop by uh, hiking uh, between Port Costa and Venetia because the distance is too great. You're going to have to cross those bridges, so it's just it's just not possible. So you have to either do the north end or the south end of the Carquinas, basically. Um, yeah, the, I guess I didn't make that clear. By, the bridge to bridge is really really something you're going to do on a bicycle, right? And not not on foot unless you're. You're pretty, pretty, you're pretty fast, I guess, right? Or you could do mm -hmm. a marathon, I suppose. And yeah, and just kind of adding on to that a little bit, I, I should probably emphasize that uh, all of the trail systems are not really complete. There's a lot of gaps between different parts um, on both sides of the Solano and Contra Costa County ends of things. So I, I would really encourage people to go to the websites for the different trails 
uh, and look at what's out there so that you get a better idea of what's available out there before you travel there. For pedestrians, it's definitely going to be a little harder. It's going to be more, probably more of a going to spot places and, and walking a few miles here and there. Uh, for bicyclists, it's the same type of thing. And, and I think Rodney was trying to get to this point earlier. Uh, the trail's not complete uh, in all of these spaces. So it's not going to be typical Bay Trail where people can go out and ride separated from traffic. Um, it's really, the Bay Trail's not complete in this space. So it's really about um, really comfortable, people who are really comfortable on road bikes and riding with with uh, cars and, and in somewhat curvy, hilly areas, they're really advanced um, riders. Um, you can probably do the loop. So just wanted to be clear about that so people know what to expect when they get out there. Yeah. Now, the other good thing to mention here too is the use of chat because when people have asked those questions and then other people chime in, oh, I did it and this is how I did it. So to encourage everybody to be reading the chat also, and then feeding in what you know from your own experiences is really helpful. Yep. Speaking of chat, we had um, Lisa, uh, Lisa Hetler Smith, who I know you've been on the show before. Um, what's, uh, what are your thoughts, Lisa? Yeah, I just want to comment about that. I have been planning for post pandemic <laughs> a, a four day, three night walk around that whole thing. So I kind of beg to differ that you can't walk it. Um, I can, you know, I pull places where I would stop overnight and just go from place to place and ride around the whole thing. So I think it's, it's totally possible to do it. You just have to do it a little differently than, you know, it's not a day hike. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that that's, maybe that's what it comes down to. Um, as somebody who has been spending a lot of time walking around <laughs> this area, I, you know, I just, I think that an overnight would be a great way to do it. Um, the bridge to bridge loop is 23 miles. So if you were to do the full Bay Trail loop there. Um, so that's a bit big for a lot of people planning a, a hike. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I don't want, I, I think the, the shortest days where it's like, maybe uh, six or seven miles and the longest day was about nine or 10. So that's, I mean, if, you, if you've got an entire day to walk. Yeah. 10 miles isn't that far, you know, yeah. especially if there are places to stop and um, take rests and so on, so. And great restaurants so, all the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, planning yeah. it, I'm planning around restaurants and coffee shop stops. That's, that's nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna Let us know how it grows. It's open. <laughs> so um, it's been fun to kind of look at the plan and figure out hotels and Airbnbs and so on. But um, I think it's that kind of thing is definitely doable. It'd be fun. Well, you th in fact, I think it would be a great weekend, right? You could um, you could take the bus from Del Norte Bart to Vallejo, and you could you could hike from Vallejo to Benicia, and I'm sure you could find a great place to stay in Benicia, um, and then you could set off and um, go across the bridge. Maybe you could make it to Port Costa. I don't know what the accommodations are in Port Costa, but maybe there's yeah, I thought there's a place, but it's not open now, but I'm hoping that that's actually one of my overnight stops. But I would just love to stay at Port yeah. Costa. It's so charming. And then, then from there, you, you would hike to, uh, to uh, Crockett and across the bridge again. In fact, I think whoever suggested that, I think you've sold me on it. I think I'm going to have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, like, like, you know what? Eight months from now, six months from now, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, cr fingers crossed, right? We're getting there. I think we're getting there, um, but we do need to be smart in the in the next few yeah, months. Yeah, so thank you all. This is really useful. Oh, I see Paco's out there. Hey, Paco, do you have anything you want to chime in and say? It was very a fabulous presentation. Oh, thank you, Paco. Paco yes. has been on every. I've I've done like. 70 yeah, but then Richie's show. Yeah. Richie, Richie's yeah. show. Yeah. Richie Unterberger, the great rock yes. star, just did a, a wonderful show about Van Morrison, who was who a great yeah, I musician. love Van Morrison. <laughs> great musician, maybe not such a smart guy when it comes to pandemics. That's what <laughs> I learned. <Yeah. laughs> um, other, other thoughts? Any other questions, comments? Great presentation. Well, thanks. And hopefully, Paco, have we inspired you to want to go to the Carquina Strait and, and check out some of these places? 
one of yeah you know when the pandemic is over when the pandemic that's that's smart that's smart although when we get all of our vaccines i'm i might i might just go up there on my bike tomorrow just because just because i have to <laughs> and um any other thoughts from my my um co-presenters um what, what's uh, simone what's next for the ridge trail well, I guess, you know, this is something we've been working on actively. We really are trying to get this Glen Cove gap um, settled. And I know that um, we're lucky to be working with the Bay Trail as they're, they're looking at closing a bunch of different gaps around Martinez and in this area. So, um, so we've got a lot coming on. And I will say that we're hoping to continue to beat the Bay Trail or being, or to be the Bay Trail being the longest because we're trying to get to 400 miles this year. So that's that's what's next for us. <laughs> Sizzling rivalry. And, and we, I love I love seeing gaps closed. And um, like that Almond, Ranch, that Almond <laughs> Ranch area is just, is just incredible. It's, you, everyone should try to get out there. You'll, you will not regret it. Um, I do have a hand raised out there. Gregory, go ahead and unmute and um, tell us. Yeah, hey, you. Ronnie. Um, so I saw a question in the chat asking about uh, e-bikes and access for e-bikes on these trails. Um, and uh, just to clarify, that's usually based on the landowner um, or whoever's managing the trail. So East Bay Regional Park District has different regulations from the National Park Service, has different regulations from John Muir Land Trust. So um, mm -hmm. generally for, for the Bay Trail sections, you'll have to check out who the, who the land manager is. Um, I can say for the Mount Wanda Trail uh, that you highlighted earlier in John Muir National Historic Site, uh, e-bikes are allowed on any trail that uh, mountain bikes are allowed on. So the actually the main fire road up to the peak of Mount Wanda and up to the Almond Ranch Gate. Um, you can have your e-bike on, but uh, you'd have to check with John Muir Land Trust. I don't believe that they're currently uh, allowing e-bikes on uh, Almond Ranch. Yeah, that, that's great information. And um, I think we'll probably want to do a segment on e-bikes. And like some people you know, are concerned about the speeds, but at the same time, the e-bikes enable things like using the Richmond San Rafael Bridge for commuting, which could be key to keeping it since, since our access to that is temporary. And so to me, it's like, I see e-bikes as the glass being half full, but we do need like good etiquette mm -hmm. from people. Yeah, I, I think I think e-bikes is, I, I appreciate uh, Greg bringing up that point and he's absolutely right that uh, the different parts of the Bay Trail are managed by a whole bunch of different groups. And there is a state legislation that was passed a couple of years ago that basically says that e-bikes are allowed on trails unless the, the, um, the managing um, uh, jurisdiction basically passes their own regulations, not allowing that for one reason or another. But, uh, you know, I think e-bikes are, are like a lot of things and today. Technology is moving so quickly. Um, you know, uh, societal acceptance and norms are, are uh, uh, trying to catch up or having a difficult time catching up to that in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of difficulty also in trying to figure out um, how to kind of fit this new new idea into our existing infrastructure too? Yeah, I, I there was an e bike on um uh, up in, up in the Crockett Hills, and it had some kind of bell that was like constantly it was like ringing, not very loud, but you could just hear it coming. And I think that was like a really good innovation. That um, in fact, I had another hiker who said, "Oh yeah, that was really good. Like I knew they were coming. It didn't bother me." So there may be some some ways of dealing with these issues. Um, but, but it's really important. I mean, we all need to think about how we impact others in these public spaces. Like I'm not an e-bike rider, I'm a regular bike rider, but when I pass walkers or runners, I'm really trying to do so carefully and, and, and not do anything that, that like ruins their experience. So it's just something you have to be really mindful of. And that's that's a really good point, Rodney. I, I think, uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know perceptions of safety and etiquette, that we already have problems between just the, the existing bicyclists, uh, regular bicyclists, and and people who walk on the trails. So it, it is about just uh, treating each other kindly and and try to be um, uh, 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 aware that you're sharing the space. It's definitely a goal of this show to kind of foster that sense of like, you know, we, this is, this is spe it's special that we all own this stuff together. Let's make that a good experience for, for everybody. That's right. 
Um, I so I, I wanted to ask Ben about what what we can expect um, like in the in the months and year ahead for the water trail. What's next for you guys? Yeah, so the water trail has quarterly public meetings, and our next one is actually this Friday. Um, so we will be hoping to add Bay Point Regional Shoreline to the water trail officially. And so that's a, a nice new launch that's uh, a little bit further up the Sacramento San Joaquin rivers there. Um, but East Bay Regional Park District just did a, a really nice job with Bay Point Regional Shoreline putting in a new paths and picnic tables and restrooms and uh, they put a boat launch in as part of that. Uh, it's definitely a site that you need to visit at higher tides. It's kind of sitting in the mud uh, at lower tides so plan accordingly but uh, a nice new spot to explore. And then in the, the coming years, you know, really a key goal of the water trail is to allow for multi-day journeys. Uh, I loved hearing about the, the woman planning her trail around the Carquinez Strait. And so we're planning to have similar opportunities with the water trail, have kayak in campgrounds, uh, hotels that will allow you to come in, a uh, variety of ways to do it. There are already a couple of campgrounds uh, on the bay at Point Pinole, Angel Island, and Candlestick State Recreation Area. So already some opportunities to do that, but really looking to fill out that network so people can do those multi-day trips around the bay. Oh, I really love that. I, I do, you know, I know there's like a new campground. It's not for, not for maybe people on the water, but Dumbarton, um, I think it's called the Dumbarton Campsite down at the Coyote Hills Regional Park near Fremont which is yep. like a hiker biker it also has car camping too but you know for me like biking around the bay i could use that and i love the idea that kayakers have facilities like that too you know like yeah why not why, why shouldn't we be going out and enjoying even though it's kind of an urbanized re region you can still do these overnight trips in camp yeah, well, and from the Bay Area and beyond, um, there's people that'll paddle all the way from Sacramento or from Redding or, um, I mean, there's, uh, it's kind of infinite once you get on the water there. So lots of, lots of places to explore. And, and when we say people, are, I, I, is, have you or Penny done, like, what's the furthest you've gone, um, uh, you know, from the Bay? I'll defer to Penny on that question. <laughs> well, I've been doing this for quite a long time. And although I've never done it all in one shot, I have paddled from Sacramento to Sac uh, from, from Reading uh, to San Francisco, and also from Fresno to San Francisco. So that was, those are my watershed adventures. And where do you stay when you're doing a trip like that? Well, like I said, I haven't done this in one, one fell swoop. So I have done it on multiple trips. So I stay with friends uh, on the Sacramento River. There's campgrounds. So I have stayed in campgrounds. And sometimes we've just gone and done a day trip doing knocking off 20 or 30 miles on the river and then going home. Wow, that's, that, sounds, that sounds So amazing. both of those rivers are really beautiful. Uh, we have and you can do it in a sea kayak. Yeah. Someone's asked a question about motorized kayaks on the water trail. What's, what's, what's the story with that? I've never seen one. No, me neither. Um, I've seen the, the sort of remote controlled hydrofoil type boards that uh, people can zip around on. Um, but no motorized kayaks yet. But uh, I have been thinking, living in Richmond and working in the city, that uh, would be a fun way to commute, but a little too long, the <laughs> human-powered paddle, but maybe if I had a motor. Yeah, we all have to be creative, right? <laughs> um, any more questions out there? We are, we are at 9 o'clock, and um, it's been a great turnout. Obviously, tons of people wanted to know more about the water trail and the Carquinez Strait. And uh, really, really want to thank my um, co-presenters. Thank you guys for making the time for this. And um, also for all you've done to promote these places, these, uh, for the water trail, the ridge trail. It's, um, you know, just it's what makes this region such a special place. Thank you, Rodney. It was so, Thanks, so Rodney. good to be on the program. Yeah. Thanks, Rodney, for this program. And mm -hmm. I will see you on Monday. See you Monday, Paco. Yeah, Monday I've got an, a great art program with uh, Greta and Manu Schnetzler. Greta was um, one of the people who, who chimed in earlier. 
and we're going to talk about their amazing bay photography. Much I'll of it there. done from kayaks. I'll be you, there. Good. Yes, you, you, Ethel, I'll be there too. 11, yeah. Yes. All I'll right. Well, then you. I'm going to, we're going to call it a night. Thank you guys for, we got another Bay Trail Confidential in the books. We will see you guys again in April. Love having Next you. Next month. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks. Special yeah. thanks to Dee. Thank you, Dee, for, uh, for Lewis's amazing photographs and for us celebrating uh, Port Costa, telling us, all, telling us all about Port Costa. So I'll go ahead and end the program. And see all right, you. Rodney. Everyone Happy stay trails. safe. Happy hey, trails. Rodney. Everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye Sarah. <laughs>